Hello Darklings, Lightlings, Hybrids, and everyone in between. How are you today? Floki. <laughs> he says hi. Yes, we will go play soon, okay? Can I can I record this? Hmm? Yeah? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anyway, we're going to be doing this really fun tag I saw today that's uh, really up my alley. It is the... Uh, Pairing my readings hashtag VR to Boho Tarot. I think it is lovely and it is matching some of your favorite books to your tarot decks. So I was like, yeah, I gotta get in on this shit, man. Like, okay. Now I don't have any physical copies since uh, I had moved so much in the last couple years. Uh, they're all in storage, but I will be putting pictures of the covers up on the screen for you to see um, from my Kindle. Okay, okay, let's get started. The first one I am going to pair is uh, the Tarot of the She with the book The She by Jonathan Matthews and also Another really good one talking about the she is finding your elven heart. And I'm just going to show you a few of the cards. We're not going to go through like the entire deck. But the she book is about um, where Jonathan has an experience. I think it was either Ireland, Scotland, or England. Um, he had went to investigate certain archaeological sites and found this little spiral symbol and started getting information and visits from these beings known as the sheep. Finding Your Elven Heart is about uh, this gentleman. I forgot the name, but I will put who wrote it on the screen too. But uh, it goes a little more in depth. Um, I think he lives in Scandinavia. And pretty much how he connects to the she and the elven beings. Alright. So there is a book by Rebecca Campbell to kind of go along with this deck. It is the Starseed Oracle. Um, I will be using like two oracles in this. And that one was really good. She also did another one with uh, meditating um she does a lot of interesting ones on Audible. You should check out Rebecca Campbell, definitely, if you're interested in that. But I also, yes, I'm going to talk about the book I had wrote and channeled, too. Pretty much about star seeds. And, uh... Yeah, so I, in 2020, started getting these channels and writing these channels into a fictional story and it is about star seeds in a secret society who fight other forces to balance out the earth while humanity ascends with a subplot of love and a lot of erotica <laughs> so uh, it's got magic it's got a little bit of everything in it and uh, yeah, so I thought it would be perfect to go with this deck along with Rebecca Campbell's books, which I will be putting on the screen as well. And these cards are just absolutely gorgeous. I adore them. I have not done my walkthrough on my channel yet of this one, so I don't want to show too many of them, but I'll show you a few. Uh, this one I thought would be perfect with Anne Rice's interview with a vampire. It's very kind of gothy, romancy like um, that book. And I thought just the whole vibe or energy of this deck would go perfect with Anne Rice's work. <clears throat> I absolutely adore it. The whole theme, the artwork, everything. These cards are great. So yeah, I think we'll save a bit of the rest for uh, the walkthrough. 
<clears throat> if I'm not going too far into depth on the books and stuff, guys, it's because I have to kind of keep the video as short as possible due to signal reasons, so I apologize for that. But I think a lot of people are aware of, you know, what some of these are. But the less common ones I'll give a little description of. So for the Macabre Tarot, I chose uh, the Penny Dreadful books that I have. I think it is perfect for those stories and themes. Um, the dark, the bizarre, the macabre, and kind of even like, I guess in that time period too, these themes and theatrics were kind of common or at least interesting to those peoples. So yeah, the Penny Dreadful books have like uh, the stories of Frankenstein, um, Dorian Gray, which I have, sorry about the dog guys, which I absolutely love, uh, Dorian Gray. Um, yeah, it's just got a bunch of uh, those spooky tales wrapped up in one beautiful gem. Okay. Oh, and excuse this, guys. I'm uh, trying to uh, design a tattoo, so just ignore that, too. The next is the Tarot Z. It's a zombie-themed, apocalyptic-themed deck, which I love. And no, I'm not going to say World War Z. <laughs> I thought of it because I, I do have that book, too, but... No, a much better one, in my opinion. Um, Rot and Ruin series by, uh, it, yeah, Jonathan Mayberry. Sorry. <clears throat> so, this deck is absolutely perfect uh, to go along with that series. It's uh, following a young man. I think it's kind of YA, maybe. But you're following a young man in this apocalyptic world where there are rules in place in the civilization you're trying to build. And uh, many different things happen when he explores outside of the fences of his home. So he's kind of led on an adventure. I'm trying to explain this without a lot of spoilers in case anyone wants to read it. But... I thought it was interesting because it has a lot of neat uh, mysteries in the books that you're interested in the main character getting to the bottom of about his history and family or friends and outside of the security of his own they run into a lot of challenges a lot of <clears throat> different ways of dealing with the apocalypse and the zombies um, like they wear cadaver oil to mask their scent, um, and a lot of other interesting elements in that book. So, yeah, Rot and Ruin series. Check it out if you haven't. Next, we have the Dark Grimoire Tarot, which is inspired by the Necronomicon. And though I am aware that no one truly knows what's in the real Necronomicon, I did find a book. Necronomicon, and I'll be reading that soon. So I thought it was kind of perfect to pair together. And I love Lovecraft as well. Um, huge fan. So yeah, the Necronomicon is basically an old grimoire with a bunch of uh, summoning and magical information on working with certain entities and dark creatures and all that good stuff so you guys know me right up my aisle at our alley aisle whichever aisles good right yeah next we have the thoth tarot yes alistair crowley i have all his books the box set and uh, love it. I think his theories and his occult knowledge, or even one could argue wisdom, is excellent. I feel like some of it can be hard to understand, 
to some people, but for me, I, and a lot of people that I know that do appreciate his work, um, have a good understanding of the things he talks about in his books. Again, it's another, uh, type of book with, uh, different knowledges and works, uh, and philosophies of this occultist. I'm sure a lot of you know who Crowley is, and, uh, yeah, so, I mean, them two match perfectly, Crowley with Crowley. <laughs> okay, next I have the oracle, other oracle I wanted to share and pair, because this is the Wisdom of the House of Night deck. And uh, PC and Kristen Cast are the authors of the House of Night series, which I absolutely love. Um, it is a YA series, and it's following Zoe Redbird um, into her new calling, new life, as a vampire. And these vampires are quite different um, than your typical vampire. They have to be around adult vampires while they're fledglings and turning into like going through a transformation to become a full vampire and it's heavily based around magic. They all practice it at this new school at her new life um, where all young fledglings go and she's got quite a bit of uh, blessings and gifts from the goddess Nyx and she's there to kick ass and take names I mean take names and kick ass I don't know whichever but yes I love this deck and I mean it goes great with the books I mean the same author kind of did both so yeah Our last one, guys, is the Night Sun Tarot, and I want to pair this one with my Silent Hill books that I have. Um, this deck, to me, uh, is very uh, Silent Hill-like, in my opinion. Floki, can we, can we stop with the squeaks, bub? Thank you. <laughs> Wish you could see his face. He's looking at me like, really? Sorry about the noise. My goodness. So yes, yeah, Silent Hill. I mean, it's really about the shadow of a person. And they end up in this town to face all their demons. Either they do or they don't by the end. And it's to their detriment or their liberation. And it's very dark themed. There's different creatures, and different elements and stuff to the stories, but I don't really know why, or I can't really say why I feel like this is uh, a good match for Silent Hill, other than uh, the vibes I get, like, or the energies I get while working with this deck. It just, I don't know, Silent Hill comes to mind, which I'm a huge fan of. Um, maybe it's the occult, um, like the occult hidden stuff in the game, and these cards are obviously very symbolic and occulty and dark, so that could be it, yes. <laughs> Plus, uh, Silent Hill has a lot of different sigil stuff in it, and this kind of does too. So, yeah, those were my choices. I really enjoyed this. Um, thank you 